It's been 120 years since the killing of the 12th Sultan of Sokwatu, Muhammad Tahiru, by the British colonial forces in 1903 at Bormi village. Sultan Tahiru, who resisted the British colonial government, was on a journey to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia when the colonial troops fought him at Bormi over a century. After the war, Bormi is now a ghost town, harboring only the tombs of Sultan Tahiru, the chief imam of Sokwatu, and a British commander, Major Francis Charles Marsh. Trustee V's Ibrahim Ismail, who was at Bormi, examined the historical significance of the battlefield. Let's take a look. Located in Funakai, local government area of Gombe State, Bormi is over 76 kilometers away from the capital, Gombe. Bormi, which was founded by a warrior, Modi Bojibril Lagaini, who was renowned for resistance against the British colonial forces. It had defensive trenches and walls which strengthened its army against their enemies in the 20th century. According to historians, the war between Atahiru and the British ensued when the Sultan revoked an agreement entered into by his predecessor which granted the British Royal Niger Company a right to conduct business within and around the Sokoto Caliphate. Some said that, okay, uh, the Caliph should stay behind and scum or submit himself to the British forces while the Caliph on his part decided that uh, he will just embark on Hijra uh, in tandem with the opinion or the, uh, what his uh, ground uh, parents predicted, particularly Usman bin Fodio. So he decided to embark on Hijra. He preferred to embark on Hijra actually than to scum or submit to British forces. So he embarked on this Hijra and he, it took him about a month to even reach Bormi. Sultan Tahiru, the Caliphate chief imam and the British commander, Major Francis Charles Marsh, were buried in the battlefield of Bormi. All your ears could hear here at Bormi is sound of birth. It is here that in 1903, the British fought led Sultan Atahiru Muhammad of the Sokoto Caliphate, where he was killed and over 600 of his supporters were also killed during a fight that shows the stance of the Sokoto Caliphate against the British colonial masters. After the war, the British forces banned locals from erecting structures or settlements in Bormi village. It was turned into farmlands for people of neighboring villages like Garing Abba and Bulagaidam. Bulagaidam village is the biggest village, barely a kilometer from Bormi. It was established after the Battle of Atahiru and the British in 1903. Abdullah Yali is 85 years old. He was raised in Bulagaidam and was told the history of Bormi by his ancestors. So, to the British forces warned Gombe Emirates not to allow anyone erect structures in Bormi. They also warned traditional rulers in Ashaka and Bulagaidam to enforce the order because they are closer to the place. They should not allow even Fulani herders to erect temporary huts. Bulagaidam. After some years, an unknown person built a hut at Bormi. He wrote a letter claiming he is the Mahdi. The letter was handed over to me. I declined to read because of the content. The traditional ruler of Ashaka ordered the village head of Bulagaidam to burn the hut, and he did. The youth don't know anything about the history of Bormi. The village is now our farmland and all of us cultivate annually. The battle that took place at least less than 
12 hours, but it led to the demise of about 20,000 uh, people. Uh, so this uh, the situation, the town is deserted, uh, but you have the tomb maybe neglected somehow because if you look at various explanations or sources or researches carry out uh, on that particular place it shows that even though it has been proposed as one of the world islamic uh, sites uh, alongside other p uh, places in nigeria uh, nothing tangible is yet to be done it was gathered that descendants of late sultana tahiru and that of british commander major francis charles visited the tombs at the same time decades ago However, the two brief families did not extend pleasantries, which was interpreted by scholars to mean that both sides are still at loggerheads over a battle that took place 120 years ago. The traditional institutions that had tremendous powers, absolute powers, have been reduced to mere robust. And this impact is a recurring thing now. Although Sultan Tahir was defeated by the British, but he will always be remembered for his strong stance for an independent caliphate and his defiance against the British colonial masters in the 20th century. From Burmi Battleground, Ibrahim Ismail, Trust TV News.